I'm using cold pressed paper, 300 grams. It's approximately 14 by 10 inches, but you could use the back of an old watercolour painting. I've just drawn a circle. It doesn't have to be like the reference photograph. And I'm using a mixture of phthalo turquoise and a tiny, tiny touch of black with my size 14 brush and I'm painting wet on dry. It's just to create this sort of turquoisey coloured rock, stone, pebble, whatever you decide it is. Just sprinkle a little bit of salt as well, a little bit of sea salt or even table salt. And I'm gonna use a watercolour pencil now and some sandpaper. You could use an emery board. And it's just rubbing the tip of the pencil against the sandpaper to release the pigment, which falls onto the damp surface and it sort of disperses. It's a really nice alternative as well to brusho, which I've been using a lot lately and I'll be using it again in this demonstration. So while that's doing its magic there, creating its special effects. I'm using a watercolour pencil to draw with. Sometimes that's quite a nice thing to do so it doesn't leave those pencil lines afterwards. I'm also using a wax crayon. It's clear and I'm just rubbing that onto the surface of the watercolour paper. The harder you rub the sort of more definite the lines are and you can see there I'm just applying some ultramarine with a touch of quinacridone gold. It creates a lovely green greyish colour. It's wet on dry. I'm using my size 14 brush. If you don't have um, a clear wax crown, you could use um, oil pastels as well, or even a, a wax candle. I've used that before many times, or birthday candles. So I'm just applying this now wet on dry and you can see how the wax has resisted and also how the watercolour pencil has dissolved. I'm now using the watercolour pencil. Um, it's a brown colour and just painting that into the wet surface and it sort of softens it as well. It's quite effective. Here comes the brush show. Couldn't resist. It's black and I'm just sort of tapping the pot to release some of the brush show. Really kind of creates a nice natural effect there. So I'm just putting a little bit of shadows around the edge of these pebbles here with my size four brush and I'm using a mixture of black and ultramarine. So I've just drawn in another shape. I'm kind of making these up, but just using the reference photograph to inspire me. And I've rubbed a little bit of wax on there as well. This is Rose of Ultramarine by Daniel Smith. If you don't have it, you can just use a magenta, a pink with a touch of black. As you can see to the left there, the salt is working quite nicely on that pebble there. I'm gonna use rubbing alcohol, which you can use for various things, but I've used it to make a hand sanitizer. If you have any allergies or sensitivity, I'd wear gloves doing this, but I'm using a pipette, so I'm not actually having any contact with that, but I'd also have your room well ventilated, but I'm sort of dropping it onto the wet surface and you can see straight away it creates these lovely sort of effects which I love. It almost looks like a sort of little droplet of water on top of a pebble here. I've sketched in another pebble and I'm applying some of the wax to create the wax resist technique. And I'm adding some markings with the watercolour pencil as well. So to create some markings in the surface there. And I'm just dropping in now using my large size 14 brush, ultramarine. There's a tiny touch of cerulean in there and a little bit of the phthalo turquoise. And I think there's a tiny touch of pink in there. So I'm going to use some cling film plastic wrap for this. So I'm just making sure I've got lots of paint on there. So here it is. I've just got a small section and you can just put Pull it out however you want onto the wet paper, place it on there and just sort of fiddle around to get the right effect and let it dry. And where you see those creases, those marks will, when you lift it off, will sort of stay and you'll get some really nice effects. Here I've used a little bit of quinacridone gold with a tiny touch of black just to tone it down. And now I'm dropping in some burnt sienna and quinacridone gold wet into wet just to create these sort of colour markings that are on the pebble. So these are just sort of, you know, your basic watercolour techniques. Now I'm going in with the watercolour pencil. It's see a brown colour and I'm just painting it into the wet surface there so it softens it and dissolves it slightly and so it's quite smudgy looking. And now I'm using the sandpaper as well to disperse the pigment. And why not a little spatter as well just to get that another sort of form of textures. And it looks so effective. So I'm going to let that dry off a little bit. I'm drawing another pebble. Again, it doesn't have to 
to correspond with the reference photograph. I'm using that as inspiration. This one is in the photograph and it's just one of those unusual looking sort of pebbles with different markings. So I'm just having a little bit of fun here. So I've used the watercolour pencil and I'm just getting a little bit of quinacridone gold to fill into this gap that I drew, the sort of this shape here. So I'm just sort of painting that on wet on dry. I've added a tiny touch of pink there just to warm it up to make it more orangey and I'm using a little bit of ultramarine mixed with a touch of black um, and a little bit of cerulean even and letting that bleed in a little bit. This is all kind of running into each other just painting these different colours. I'm using a small round brush here. So I decided to get my plastic card and scratch into the surface, the wet surface, pull the paint and also the scratches, the paint runs into them, so it creates very dark, thin lines. I'm using a bit of brush show, black brush show there, and sprinkling that into the damp surface. And because it wasn't running enough, I'm just going to give it a little spritz with my spritzer bottle. So I'm going to remove the cling film now because the paint has nearly dried, so it's created these lovely effects here to resemble all those sort of marks on that pebble there. So I'm quite pleased with that. This one, I'm going to keep a little bit more simple. I'm just using the Thalo Turquoise again, which I love, with lamp black. Any black will do actually, or even Payne's Grey if you don't have black and I'm painting this wet on dry and I'm dropping in a little bit of ultramarine as well just to vary the colours. I'm going to use granulation medium. I don't use it very often and I'm dropping the granulation medium into the wet paint with a pipette and it should create some really interesting uh, sort of effects, a mottled sort of effect. As you can see, it's changing before our eyes. So I've mixed up a little bit of quinacridone gold here with some burnt sienna. I'm working wet on dry with my size six brush. I've added a little bit of Payne's Grey in there just to darken it up. Again, you can use the black. I'm adding a little bit more of the black as well leaving sort of white gaps because there's a, a pebble in there just um, below um, this stone here that looks very textured. I love the sort of textured effect of it. So I'm just dropping in a little bit more paint here to cover some of the white areas of the paper. And I'm using, I'm still using my size six brush, working carefully around. And the beauty of this is that if I want to make this little stone a bit bigger, I can. I'm playing here. I've gone to a smaller brush here just to move the paint around and just to create some different effects. I'm using a little bit of brush show as well, just a little bit of black brush show there on top of the wet surface because it wasn't moving very much. I'm using my spritzer bottle. So I'm painting another little pebble in here using quinacridone gold. I think a tiny touch of grey as well just to drop that in and just to create a marbling effect using my size four brush here and just sort of painting this creamier paint damp into wet. So not only can you try these different sort of brush shows and watercolour pencil effects but you can also just use your watercolour techniques as well. I've sprinkled a little bit of salt on there and I've gone on to paint this very brightly coloured pebble or stone up here using burnt sienna and quinacridone gold. I'm now getting a touch of pink and burnt sienna because I want this really really warm colour that I can see in this stone just above here and I'm painting this damp into wet to create that really sort of vibrant strong tonal colour there. When it's damp into wet of course the paint doesn't disperse as much it stays where it is and you get a nice soft edge. I've just rinsed off my brush there and getting a little bit more grey and dropping that in wet into wet and I'm using a little bit of quinacridone gold a little bit of burnt sienna and lots and lots of water. I'm using my size six brush. I'm tapping some terracotta brush o gently so the crystals fall out onto the wet paint and uh, hopefully a little bit of magic happens there also. I'm using my plastic card now you could use your twig as well just to sort of scratch in to this little pebble there and move the paint around as well sort of almost drawing with this wet paint. Believe it or not I'm actually using a sponge a natural sponge but you could use any sort of sponge. I've wet it run all the water out so it was damp and I've just gone in with some dark paint there and just tapping very gently onto the water 
watercolour paper to get these kind of stippling and pattern effect that you get on some of the pebbles there. It has run onto the pebbles beside it so I'm just lifting off very quickly with my paper towel and it comes off quite nicely actually because everything's a little bit damp. So I'm just using my brush now just to smooth things a little bit and put a touch more dark in there. It's almost like a magenta and a black that I've used there. And I just wanna make this pebble now a little bit bigger. It looked a little bit odd where it was, so I'm just extending it a little. I'm just putting a little bit of shadow on this pebble here that I put the cling film on. It's dried off a little bit, and I've just, not so much shadow, but darker marks on there. I'm using my size six brush, painting wet on dry, and it's just really gray blues. I'm mixing up a little bit of brown, really, burnt sienna, a touch of pink, and I'm spattering this little pebble here just using my hand as a guard to stop it um, spattering everywhere and I thought I'd spatter a little bit on some of them here and there just to create some texture and markings on them. What I've decided to do here is just paint in the negative shapes in the background carefully around the pebbles. So I'm using this size 4 brush, you could use a size 6 brush, I will be using a larger brush to sort of spread the paint as well but I'm using ultramarine and black, you could use a phthalo turquoise and black but just a colour that makes a really dark tonal value. So I'm using my large size 10 brush here. I've wet it and I'm just drawing out some of this dark colour. I've sprinkled a little bit of salt and now I'm using some brush as well to create some lovely textures and marks in the background. I'm using my spritzer bottle now just to get some of the brush moving as well.
I'm just using some shadow colour here. It's a bit of ultramarine and black and just glazing it on the dry pebbles using my size six brush and then just softening. Again, I'm not worried about back runs or any sort of marks. I'm just playing. So I really encourage you to have a go and not to worry and just have a play. Uh, I'm just sort of, I love this pebble here, all the things that happen to it, that sort of turquoisey colour. So just again, mixing up some more shadow colours, painting on this sort of magenta magenta black little pebble here and just softening and it just makes them look a little bit more 3D adding this shadow colour. So what I'm doing here is I'm just lifting off the highlights. My painting is dry and I'm using the paper towel, my stencil brush, but just use an old brush or a synthetic brush or even a sponge or a Q-tip just to lift off a little bit of light. And it just creates an, another 3D effect. And then just take the excess off with the paper towel. And I'm finishing off now. Again, I've dried my painting and I'm finishing off with a spatter of white gouache as I like to do. Again, you don't have to do this. It just gives it a little sparkle and some more light on the pebbles. So I'm just using a quite an ivory colored mount to put round the pebbles here. And it really does bring the painting to life. I've really enjoyed this painting, all the different techniques. I found it really therapeutic and a great excuse to practice my watercolor painting. If you like this tutorial and you'd like to support the content that I create here on YouTube, why not think about joining my Patreon Patreon membership. You will get access to my weekly exclusive tutorials and downloadable outline sketches. More details about the membership can be found in the description below. Just click more. Thank you so much for watching. Happy pebble painting. Bye for now.